All right, yeah, thanks for joining up today. Um, I'm just going to give a, a brief um, <clears throat> a brief talk about SPIN, a little bit of a teaser, and I have a demo in here as well. And um, so just enough to kind of give you a taste of what the service is capable of and a little bit of what it might look like and feel like to use for those of you who are new to it. Um, so as Annette said, I'm the lead of the infrastructure services group and we deploy SPIN, but we do it in partnership with a lot of other folks um, at NURSE and some of them are, are there in the room. Um, so uh, it's actually something that's, uh, you know, involves a, a lot of people across the organization to operate and, and support. So, um, so, you know, where did it come from? Where did SPIN um, really come from? The, well, the idea was that we kept hearing you know, questions from uh, from our user community about services, you know, the, the ability to run services alongside HPC that could serve a number of purposes that would help tie the research project or tie a workflow together. And services, um, you know, the nature of these services that they is that they would be persistent, but they'd be able to access some of the same resources that computational jobs had had access. So the file systems, the networks. Um, there's also a need for scale. There's a need to run custom software, um, and most of the time, services like this need to be need to be persistent. You know, for the duration of the project, not for just the duration of of jobs or a certain you know a number of runs. Um, in fact, they might even need to be the tool that's scheduling the jobs or conducting the, the workflow orchestration. And so that means staying up when HPC is down and being available on the web. Where do you put these things like this, like databases or data archives, workflow managers, websites, science gateways that a lot of projects actually need. Um, and so we created SPIN so that we would be able to provide, in addition to the compute and the storage, uh, an infrastructure for NERSC users to run those kinds of services that help tie their projects together. So um, uh, lots of projects need more than just HPC. And that was what SPIN was designed to provide. So the way it works is um, it's a system where you can deploy your own science gateways, workflow managers, databases, or other kinds of network services that are either used by your computational jobs, or they're used by your user community, uh, or that help to di disseminate your data. Um, there's just a number of ways that this could be this could be spun. And um, the, the infrastructure is built on the technologies at the bottom, Docker containers, uh, the Rancher orchestration system, and Kuber the Kubernetes uh, scheduler. There's a couple different Kubernetes clusters that are actually part of part of SPIN in our instance of Rancher. And um, together, this offers kind of the cloud style flexibility of deploying services like databases or websites with containers, but we've architected it in such a way that this, this instance, it's not running on our HPC system, but it's running alongside it and has access to the file systems and the networks. So, um, that makes it very well suited for the workflow orchestration that I'm talking about, but it's also part of the supported nurse platform, so a place for these things to actually live. And I've listed just a few of the different projects that are using SPIN down the right side of this slide, and if you kind of skim through there, you can see these are um, these are very particular kinds of services for the type of science that these projects do. So um, so Desi there, the first one there, they do nightly sky surveys. And so there are daily routines that um, transfer data and process jobs and uh, collect results so that they're ready for the next night. And a lot of those soft, a lot of those um, those tools um, are built in spin or rely in some way in spin. And going down through there, ESS dive is a data archive. <clears throat> And it takes advantage of uh, large storage systems that we have um, at NERSC, and then the SPIN platform for the front end to that. JGI does a number of different genomics workflows and has a number of different science gateways. Some of those live in SPIN. 
LZ is a dark matter detector that's that's done a lot of really interesting work in in spin to um to be able to allow analysis of the tech the detectors events to be done via web tools that are hosted in spin um, for the scientists that need to take a closer look at at um, events that come from that detector um, and the materials project has also made use of spin for um, some of their their web facing tools that um, that allow for um, um, molecular simulation and material simulation. So these are just some examples of the projects that that we know about, but there's dozens of projects that are making use of spin for services like like these uh, that go alongside their uh, their HPC work. Um, at a very high level, and I'll give you a demonstration of this, but at a very high level, um, uh, what you do to use the rancher system that Spin is built on is uh, there's a user interface, um, and there's also a number of kind of text-based, um, uh, I guess, file artifacts that you can use to create container-based deployments of services and then deploy them. Um, in the spin architecture. And when you deploy something, it might look a little bit something like this. So this is just a web service, but it can have a front end, it can have a back end, it can have a database, it can have a key value store. And you define these <clears throat> um, using uh, Kubernetes constructs or using the, the UI. And you build these images yourself um, or you rely on ones from, from, the, um, from public um, repositories like Docker Hub, um, but you get to, to control how the composition of those services actually makes up your your application. And the the job of the Rancher orchestration system is to figure out what nodes and spin to run those on, um, how to mount up the storage that you've declared. Um, and to keep all those things running and to plumb the networks that connect all of those pieces and to keep those private from other people's deployments. So um, you have a lot of degrees of freedom in the kinds of services that you can create, but web services that are built like this are, are pretty, pretty common. Um, so let me show you how that works. Um, I'm going to deploy an app in five minutes, or actually I'm going to show you a video of me doing that. And the app that I'm going to deploy is actually the one that we use in our training program. So we have a workshop about every two months. And part of that is building a live thing. It's kind of a canned example, but it's designed to sort of exhibit a lot of the features of, uh, of SPIN. <clears throat> so this app looks like this. It's Python based. Um, it uses some static files in CFS. It's got a little database back end. We're going to build it from the bottom up with the database first. And again, I, I really want to stress SPIN is not a service for deploying things that look just like this. SPIN has a lot of flexibility. So this is only one example of the kind of thing that you could deploy. You could deploy just the database. Many people do. You could deploy a, like a headless API rather than a UI, or you could build some something that's that's completely different. So um, you have a lot of degrees of freedom as far as the kinds of um, the kind of microservices that you can assemble based on what your project needs. So I'm going to shift over to the demo now. So I'm going to stop sharing and share that window instead. <clears throat> And we'll run through this. So this is a this is a video. <clears throat> I can find it. Um, yeah, okay. Why can't I find it? Okay, that's odd. Why can I not share the screen? Um, oh, here we Does go. Does it right. screen share? Okay. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, sorry. It's just I have a lot of windows that sort of look similar. Uh, so let me make sure, sorry, folks. Let me just make sure this is, uh, there we go. The all important optimize for 
video. Okay, here we go. Okay, so uh, can y'all see that okay? All right, so I'm gonna start this and then I'm just gonna describe what's happening. So uh, this is the Rancher um, user interface and I'm gonna start right off with deploying a database. So I click the deploy button and this is where you start specifying what's in the workload. So this workload is gonna be a database and it's gonna use the MySQL version five image. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, you put things like workloads inside of a namespace. Now this image is designed to take a number of environment variables that specify the name of the database, the user that will access it, the password, the time zone, and you specify those in environment variables. <laughs> whether you deploy it in spin or any place else, it's just how that image is customized. And then this particular image requires certain privileges, capabilities in order to run correctly. And in spin, this is an important aspect because it we limit the number of capabilities that you can run, but um, MySQL requires um, just a handful of capabilities because it, it starts up as root and then it changes to a MySQL user. So it needs to be able to do things like that. That database is running already. Okay. That took us just a, a little bit of time now. And we didn't have to build that MySQL image or anything. I could do that for real just that fast. Now let's deploy the web application that goes on top of it. That's called app. This is a custom image. So it's not in uh, it's not in Docker Hub. It's actually in the nurse registry, registry.nurse.gov, that we supply as part of SPIN. And it's a Galaxy image application that our colleague Rowan Thomas built for this workshop. Now, notice here I'm specifying the same password that I specified for the database so the web app will be able to connect to it. And then the other thing I'm doing here is I'm mounting. Uh, a CFS directory. <clears throat> so I'm setting these settings. <clears throat> the volume is called images, and it is an existing directory on CFS that has this path. <clears throat> so that could be one of your own project's path. And I'm inside the container where it runs, I'm going to mount it on slash SRV static. And these are static images from, um, from Sky Survey. Now, um, down in this other section here where I set the permission or the um, capabilities for the database, I'm gonna set them for the, the web service, but it doesn't really need any special capabilities at all. It's just an unprivileged layer. And it's started. So, um, so now I've got a web application running in a container, a database application running in a container. They're talking to each other. And I'm adding what's called an ingress. If you're familiar with Kubernetes, that's basically a web proxy so that I can get this web app, I can get at the web application over the network. <clears throat> the host name for that is based on the cluster name and the namespace and the name of the ingress that um, that DNS name is created automatically. And what I'm doing here is saying when someone comes to that host name, direct the traffic to the app workload on port 5000 where it's listening. And then there's a, a little uh, custom setting in here below that actually we you don't need to put any more, but when the demo was made, I did. So this is basically creating a, an entry in a, a reverse proxy at the network perimeter of SPIN that allows that web application to be accessible on uh, uh, port 80 externally. And it takes a little bit of time to actually create that ingress. Um, and it will also go out and create that DNS name within the spin.nurse.org subdomain and assign it an, um, an IP address. <clears throat> and then once it's ready, you'll be able to click it. And this is actually ac accessing the application. Um, and the database underneath that image came off of CFS. And some of this metadata here is actually um, stored in the database. 
<clears throat> so that is um, that's an example. So this is the exercise. Like I said, this is an exercise we do in the workshop. It's a little bit more involved in the actual workshop. We get into a little bit more detail of uh, some of the things, some of the tools that you can use in in Rancher and Kubernetes to um, do a little bit more sophisticated deployments. But that's kind of a brief version of um, actually starting up uh, a real web service in SPIN uh, in kind of a lightning fast uh, deployment. So I I actually um, hate when presenters do what I just did and say, see, you can build it in five minutes because I know that that's not always the real story. Um, so obviously, there's a, there's some prep work that leads up to doing a deployment that that quickly, and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. Um, so, uh, you know, if you were to use a tool like Spin, um, you know, here are some of the things that would sort of be different about your your world. And um, <clears throat> so, the biggest thing about this example, the, the biggest sort of um, sort of like person behind the curtain is that that image with that Python application was already created and that database um, already populated with some metadata. So you would, you know, spin isn't canned sets of applications, um, but so you need to be able to um, build a container image that has that Flask application in there um, but you're already going to do that anyway, right? You're already going to develop that application anyway. So, uh, so in an environment like Spin, this first point here is, you know, you're going to do your development. You're going to, in a conventional environment, you would have iterated code changes and done testing on a development VM. And in an, in a kind of Spin environment or development workflow, you'd be iterating those same code changes and testing but you'd probably be testing out in a local container deployment. You'd run something like Docker desktop or Rancher desktop, build that container and make sure that it works properly. And then in a conventional environment, once you got to a good stopping point, you'd commit, test, release, you know, push it out to a VM or whatever. In the spin environment, commit, test, rebuild the image, push the image to registry.nurse.gov, and then release on spin. So you know, update it to a new version of the image, it pulls it over and restarts the service. So a little bit of a difference in the flow there. Maybe CI, you might use CI, you might, you know, that could apply to either environment um, to do those steps above. Um, where it starts to get interesting is, you know, if you want to, when you want to make bigger changes. Um, so just the coding and testing and releasing process, maybe not that different. But where the where spin really shines is your ability to kind of change things that would be much more difficult in a conventional environment, particularly a managed environment. So let's say if you want to upgrade the database or change some configuration to get better performance, that's going to be a help desk ticket, you know, in the conventional environment. But in spin, redeploy the database workload. If you want a different version, uh, of the database, then you just specify the version that you need. If you want to make a change to the configuration, then you just pass in a new configuration file or or change the deployment so that it passes a different argument at startup and you've made the change. So this is a database that you own. It's not uh, one that you share with someone else. Um, you know, a lot of the interaction, these, these next points here about, you know, uh, SSHing into the VM, tailing logs, you know, what's going on with the service, you know, your access to those things are a little bit more abstract in an environment like Spin. So you use the UI or the CLI to look at logs. So you're not interacting with something that you log into, you're interacting with something that's running in a Kubernetes environment. Um, uh, you know, if there's trouble, you know, if the thing goes down, um, you're going to be SSHing in and trying to figure out what's going wrong. For a lot of different failure modes, you can kind of rely on Kubernetes to just reschedule the crashed web application. Kubernetes kind of has one job, and that's keep the containers running. So um, even if that means restarting a, a crashing container endlessly. So um, there are even things that you can put in called health checks that uh, can do continuous 
monitoring. So um, those are pretty powerful tools. And then the last one um, here is that in a conventional environment, a, a lot uh, of documentation is needed to kind of capture details about what you've done. The really nice thing about an environment like SPIN that's entirely um, software defined and declarative is that there's a file that describes everything that we just did. And so you actually have uh, a deployment YAML file that you can connect, that you can actually commit into repository and check and, uh, and diff and roll back um, <clears throat> that describes your entire deployment. So um, am I saying you never have to write documentation? I don't know. I mean, I guess that'd be a great selling point. Probably not. But the point is, you know, something that's actually declarative um, and easy to share and track is a huge benefit uh, when things get complex. So obviously, this is a real brief overview, kind of a teaser. Um, I tried to keep uh, tried to keep it kind of honest, but you're um, if you're interested in using Spin, like I said, we have workshops regularly throughout the year. Those are instructor led. You'd, you'd build the same application yourself. Um, and then for established projects where people want to join um, colleagues and help out with some existing deployments in Spin, we have kind of a fast track there subject to approval uh, where you can work through the exercises yourself and kind of get up to speed with your uh, with your colleagues. And we also have office hours you can schedule, drop in for interactive help. So you're not just at the mercy of um, tickets to get things done. So um, that's all that I have.